Within the logic blocks, there is a, another block, which you can see here. And this offers even more control than the more basic if-then block. This is an if-then-else. So what can happen here is, if a condition is true, then we can execute the blocks here. Else, we can execute the blocks that are placed just here. So a very simple program. Again, we'll look at button A being pressed. So if button A has been pressed, we will then execute these blocks here. Else, we will execute blocks that are placed in this loop here. We can also click on this cog icon and configure it even further. So we could then have, for instance, another else if. So we then build up to this command here. So now we have a if button A is pressed, then do this. Else if, we can have another condition, we do this. And if none of those are true, then we would execute code placed here. Let's try this out. So for the second input test, what we'll do is we'll have button B. And then let's make some things happen. So let's add some icons. We've got a heart. Here we'll have a tick. And then lastly, we'll choose a cross. So now when this executes, so it keeps going around this forever loop, and then when it comes in here, the first test is, is button A pressed? If it is, then we'll put a heart on the screen. Else, if button B is pressed, we'll have a tick. Else, if non, neither of these are true, then we'll put a cross on the display. So we can see in the emulator now, neither of these buttons are pressed, so we're displaying a cross. But if I press button A, we execute the heart command. If I release that, we go back to the X here, because neither of these are true. If I press button B, we now see the tick. And again, if I release it, we go back to the cross. So we're testing multiple conditions within one block.